you gonna come and say hello, mate? Come on. <laughs> come on, Trey. Don't be shy. I'm Alex Huatian, Chinese Olympic event rider, and we're here at my stables in Leafy Cheshire in the UK, where I'm based with my team of horses. I share the stables also with my girlfriend, who's a dressage rider, and we also have a young Chinese dressage rider, Rao Jiayi, based here as well. My horses here at Pinfold Stables tend to have three names, which does start to get a little bit confusing. They have their official competition name. They also have their stable name, which is basically their nickname, what we call them at home. And then they also have their Chinese names, which is something that we started in 2008 to try and help fans and audiences in China connect to each of these wonderful different horses. And to understand that each of these horses have very different personalities. Welcome to Bridge Builders, where we meet different inspirational men and women who have all, in their own unique way, helped to enhance relations between China and the UK. In today's podcast, we're donning our riding gear and traveling to the northwest of England to meet China's first ever Olympic eventing rider and also the youngest person ever to compete in this field at any Olympic Games. Alex Whitean from China. You actually forget he's only 20 because he's been around the scene for a couple of years. The Beijing Olympics was both a hill and a trough for Alex Partien as the then 18-year-old made history by being the youngest ever Olympic event rider. Alex Partien will compete in both team and individual events in Jakarta. And he has chosen a new horse for the occasion, named Spike. I have to say, this horse is looking class. And Alex rode that really beautifully down there. You know, Hua Tian has been China's number one in equestrian for quite a while. And as the sport grows in China, so too will Hua Tian. And his list, no doubt, of accomplishments. He might still only be in his 30s, but Alex Hua Tian has already competed in three Olympic Games in Beijing, Rio and Tokyo and has two Asian Games medals under his belt. He won a silver medal at the Incheon Games in 2014 and a bronze medal at the Jakarta Games in 2018. But Alex isn't just the talk of equestrian circles because of his sporting accolades. As a rider of dual heritage with a Chinese father and a British mother, he has also played a pivotal role in raising the profile of equestrianism in China and making it a more inclusive sport. Tilly Barrent is a freelance journalist who writes for Eventing Nation, the online magazine which covers all things equestrian in the UK. Alex is very unique in our sport because a lot of very successful event riders come from what we call the big six nations. And those will be nations like Great Britain, USA, France, Germany. China is, is very much what we would call a developing eventing nation. And Alex is kind of, he has acted as a trailblazer. So how did Alex's story begin? Well, his father, Hua Shan, is Chinese, and his mother, Sarah Noble, is a British equestrian who speaks fluent Mandarin. So my father's from quite an interesting family. My grandfather was an ace in the Chinese Air Force uh, during the Korean War, and met my grandmother, who was one of the first female doctors, when he was shot down. Uh, my father grew up as an only son with four sisters, and met my British mother at the Canton Fair. My mum did Chinese at university here in the UK, went out to Hong Kong to work, and when they met at the Canton Fair, it really was the only place where Western businesses and Chinese businesses could trade at that time. And their relationship developed as China opened up. And the rest, as they say, is history. The couple got married in Cambridge in 1987, and then a few years later, Alex arrived into the world, followed by his younger brother, Jamie. They spent the first part of the boy's childhood in China. Alex says they had a very colorful and privileged childhood. 
and there was no shortage of adventures for him and his brother. I have very varied memories of China as a child. I grew up in quite a few different places. I remember Beijing. I also remember visiting my grandparents who were living in Guangzhou, so right in the south, very hot, very sweaty. In the old part of the city, the, the buildings are very close to each other, very green, very lush, and you know the strong sense of smell of incense and making jiaozi, so dumplings with my grandmother and learning calligraphy with my grandfather, talking about you know the times when he was growing up. He ran away from home when he was 14 to join the Red Army and to understand the stories and to get a sense firsthand from my grandfather and my grandmother the challenges and the difficulties that they went through in their generation. To give us what we have in our generation was an amazing thing to, to listen to. And then of course we, we moved to Hong Kong and we lived in a small seaside village near Sai Kung in the New Territories. I remember eating of the best seafood you could ever have on the harbour front of Saipan village. I have so many memories growing up in China that it's, you know, I think they're all very nostalgic, really. <laughs> Alex still recalls the special time he spent with his paternal grandparents with great affection, and family is very important to him. No matter what else is going on in his life, he always makes time for those closest to him. Alex says that family plays a huge role in Chinese society in general. One of the most curious things about Chinese culture is all of the definite names for family members. You know, in British culture, grandmother can be either grandmother, you have cousin who could be anybody, uh, we could be cousins, to be honest. Whereas in China you have lao lao, ye ye, lao ye, er gu, da gu, shu shu, like every single family member has a very specific name and not only is it difficult to learn but I think it really demonstrates the importance of family in Chinese culture as well but it's also something that I think from my half British side always amuses me slightly. Chinese culture and values really influenced him in other ways growing up too. Alex has always been very ambitious and he attributes this to his father and his Chinese side. I think I could definitely say any ambition I have has probably come from my Chinese roots. Culturally, Chinese parents are always very ambitious for their children, and my father certainly is. I think I have a very healthy respect for education and for knowledge, and that certainly is, again, a very stereotypical Chinese trait. <laughs> I, funnily enough, never went to university, and that's something that my father still to this day finds very hard to come to terms with. <laughs> But, having said that, I very much respect education and those who, who have been all the way through it. And, you know, I always say to my father, one day I might, I might go to university and finish off my education, one day. <laughs> so what prompted Alex's interest in horses from a young age? My father says that the reason why my family is so horsey is because he learned to ride donkeys in the Cultural Revolution. But I think the real reason is my mum came from a very traditionally British horsey family, despite the fact that she lived and worked in China. Uh, when she moved to China, she immediately got connected to the, to the very early buds of horse sport, what has developed into serious horse sport now in China. Okay. Growing up in Beijing, I spent most afternoons with my mum at the stables, whether I was in a pram still and, and just chilling in the stables or starting to ride when I was four years old. So for me, it was a very, very horsey upbringing, just in lots of different parts of the world. Looking back, Alex thinks it was definitely an advantage developing his equestrian skills in China as a youngster because he got to ride lots of different ponies at the stables and this made him a more adaptable rider. I think riding in China and in Hong Kong had a huge benefit to my riding now. Here in the UK, the sport has professionalised so quickly. Younger riders tend to pick one sport within the equestrian sphere very quickly and concentrate their 
efforts and their time on that, which is not certainly not a bad way of going about it. But in, in China at that time and in, in Hong Kong at that time, we had a much broader base of learning. We rode lots of different ponies. It was all riding school based riding. You didn't have your own horse or your own pony. So you had to learn to ride lots of different ponies and you had to experience lots of different sports, which I think made you a much broader rider and also much more versatile and able to deal with different personalities of horses, which as a professional rider, you have to be able to do that. Of course, not every rider is able to gel with every horse, but if you have a a broader experience, you are more likely to be able to. Alex's dad, Hua Shan, says that his son's love of horses and his relaxed personality were evident from a young age, and even then he displayed all the traits you need to become an event rider. Alex is quite different from like he's a, a classmate, the, the, the same age. As soon as he's on the horses, he's a very happy very relaxed and enjoyed himself and uh, he, he's not worried about anything. So the character wise, Alex is quite like me, a bit of a laid back and takes time. And in the eventing, you cannot be nervous. If you're nervous, you're finished. So he was born into the sports, absolutely. Another person who vividly remembers Alex's rapport with horses from an early age is Pippa Room, editor of the magazine Horse and Hound, and a friend of Alex's for more than 20 years. The pair met when Pippa was working in a yard belonging to Olympic equestrians Lucinda and Clayton Fredericks. Pippa was 18 years old and Alex was 10 at the time. Alex's passion for horses was definitely obvious at a really young age. He had come over from Hong Kong for some time during his school holidays and his parents had somehow arranged for him not to go to a riding school or anything like that, but to spend time on the yard with these really top event riders. And I think they had said that they would find a pony or something for him to ride, but uh, there were no ponies in sight and Alex ended up riding these enormous horses. And I remember him being this tiny, skinny kid with legs that just about came below the saddle flats riding these enormous horses, but uh, quite successfully, I might add. So even at that age, it was obvious that he was uh, passionate about horses. When Alex was 11, he and his brother moved to the UK and attended boarding school here. He said it was a culture shock for them both, but luckily they both had English as their first language. He said that his dual heritage upbringing really helped him to adapt. He initially went to a private preparatory school in Wiltshire and then went on to the prestigious boys' school, Eton. I thrived. I loved boarding. I think having grown up in lots of different cities, my parents working in other cities, not always being around them 100% of the time, already gave me and my brother a, a sense of independence. And so I think boarding and being with our friends and being in that kind of environment, we really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. At the age of 18, Alex decided to take a year out of his studies to try to qualify for the 2008 Olympics in Beijing. Alex's mum had been involved in coordinating the equestrian part of the bid. So it was a very exciting time for the whole family. Alex decided to represent China and said he just went with his gut instinct at the time. He became the first ever Chinese eventing rider in Olympic history. Choosing to represent China at the Olympics, I guess as a alternative to riding for GB, was a very natural decision for me. Obviously I grew up with a dual heritage background, but my mum, even though she is very British. She's also very Chinese in many ways. You know, she's lived and worked in China for many years. Her Chinese is incredible. She's very proud of time that she spent in China and very proud to be a part of everything that was going on at that time. And so I think in terms of family support, I think the decision to ride for China was a very natural one. Although the Beijing Olympics didn't go as well as Alex had hoped because he fell off his horse, Wu Song at fence number eight, it was a huge achievement, even taking part at such a young age. Alex says he'll never forget the experience, and it's one that has shaped who he is as an equestrian today. It was also wonderful to be part of such a transformative sporting event for China. It's very difficult to understand how important the Beijing Olympics were to China, but also to 
Chinese people. I think it was perfect timing in terms of national confidence, and perhaps I'm biased because I'm Chinese, but I've never felt that sense going to, to other championships and other Olympics where the whole population felt like they were invested in, in the games themselves. And that was a ex very exciting thing for a young 18-year-old boy to be a part of. Since the Beijing Olympics in 2008, Alex's career has gone from strength to strength. Apart from two medals he won at the Asian Games, he also competed at the Rio Olympic Games. And last year, Alex was a member of the first Chinese eventing team to qualify for the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo, a huge milestone. Alex is a self-professed equine addict. Working with horses, I think it's an addiction because you spend hours, days, weeks, months, years trying to build this trust between yourself and this animal. And throughout all that time, you're looking for that perfect moment of partnership. And I maybe compete with a particular horse several times in a year. And I might only get that moment of perfect partnership once for a few minutes in one of those competitions. And that moment's very addictive because A, it's so hard to achieve, but also B, that sense and feeling of having this big, powerful animal working with you to achieve your joint goals is incredible. Alex can't imagine his life without horses, despite the fact it can be challenging and requires a lot of self-discipline. There are endless challenges of working with horses. Uh, you're working with big, powerful, emotional animals that have over millions of years evolved to run away from you and somehow you have to work with them day in, day out, trust one another to a point where you're able to challenge yourselves as a partnership to compete in these amazing competitions. Uh, in my sport of eventing, we have the three different phases, the dressage, the show jumping and the cross country. And it's, to me, the sort of ultimate challenge and the ultimate sport in, in testing that partnership between horse and rider. And it's not just a question of investing time into trying to create a bond with each of your horses as a professional rider. It's also quite a costly business. Beyond the sport itself, we have to keep the show on the road. Horses are expensive animals to keep. We're very lucky here at Pinfold to have great supporters and great sponsors and owners that help support us to achieve the goals that we want to achieve. But it's hard work. It looks very glamorous, and it is very glamorous. But behind the scenes, a lot of people have to put a lot of blood, sweat and tears to keep it going. One of the people who's been a long-time supporter of Alex's riding career is Edwina Tu Yi. She and her family live in Xiamen. Hello, my name is Edwina. My Chinese name is Xu Ye, but everyone call me Eddie. I'm the owner of Alex Competition Horses. Actually, my first step into the horsey world is through a horse call First Love, or we call him Fred. That was because Alex was preparing for London Olympic 2012, and he needed a horse to be the same nationality as him. We need to get the horse of Chinese passport. So he asked me if I can put my name down for this horse. In 2014, it was on Eddie's horse, Temujin, that Alex won a silver medal at the Incheon Asian Games. Eddie lives in China, but her horses are in Europe and she really misses them. She says they're like big puppies and she has high hopes for them. My dream for Arthur is that he can make it to Asian Games next year, hopefully, and the Paris Olympic in 2024. And for Scarlett, is that she can have lovely children and maybe some of them could become Alex's horses. And apart from owning some of Alex's horses, Eddie says that Alex is also a very good friend and an outstanding godparent to her son, Benny, who adores and respects the rider. Ma. Ma. Qi. Ma. Qi. Ma. My son Benny is 20 months old now. He can pronounce Ma and Qi uh, Ma nicely. That means horse and uh, riding in Chinese. 
CMA, the Chinese character for a horse, is one of the first characters that all children must learn in China. And there are lots of idioms with MA, Ma, meaning horse. Back to Edwina and Benny now. Uh, he also very lucky to have Alex as his godfather. Alex sends videos and photos of the horses to Benny all the time. I asked Benny if he want to be a rider when he grew up. He was hesitating. Maybe it was because he knew that that would be a tough work. Alex rides other owners' horses as well, and not just Eddie's. And he's got to know all of them and their idiosyncrasies. Pippa Room from Horse and Hound magazine says Alex has an innate ability to connect with different horses and tremendous emotional intelligence. He's also very competitive by nature. I think Alex is very good at understanding his horse's characters. Whenever I speak to him about his horses, he always really brings out the personality of each and every one of his horses. So I feel like I know them well. And I think that the way that he understands those horses so well and is so analytical about their characters really helps him to bring out the best in all of them. He's a very intelligent young man. And I think that really helps with that. Alex is also a winner. We have a lot of riders in our sport who do well and never win anything. We have riders on British teams who are really consistently great team players, but they very rarely actually win a class. Alex has won 10 times at international level, including three times at the four star level, which is just below the very top level. And that shows that he's a real winner in his personality. He has that sort of fire in his belly to crunch at home and actually win when he wants to and when he needs to. Among Alex's horses, it may surprise you to know that one of the horses that Alex regularly rides, Trey, who we met at the beginning of the podcast, is a clone. Trey is, he's a clone of a very famous stallion called Chilly Morning, which in our sport is still very new. I think it's very new with everybody. And we're very lucky and very excited to have him here. As you can see, he's quite an affectionate horse. <laughs> He quite likes attention, he likes a bit of a cuddle. He's carried all of the same talents and the same traits, uh, looks very much the same. The original Chilly Morning was the same color with the white face, very distinctive look and very talented. So how common is it to have a cloned horse? Back to Tilly Berendt, freelance writer for Eventing Nation. It's still an, a concept that's in its infancy, certainly, and it's a real argument of nature versus nature. Is it bloodlines alone that make these horses great competitors or is it everything that happens to them through their formative years and the way that they're produced? And so it's really an ongoing science experiment and certainly the riders that are being chosen to pilot these clones are top notch. I don't know whether it will be the future of our sports or not, but certainly it's exciting to see what these young horses could do. Working with horses has taught Alex so much. me a huge amount about myself you know it, it pushes you physically and mentally to the absolute ultimate you learn very quickly about how strong and how weak you are you learn patience you learn teamwork you learn dedication you learn resilience without all of these things you can't continue to do it and I think these are all values that are important to whatever you want to do to a high level or a high quality but with horses it I feel it gets tested further because you can't communicate with the horse, you can't tell them what you want to do. You can't express your frustration verbally. You have to communicate through your actions and over time. And that instills a level of dedication and patience that I think is difficult to replicate anywhere else. Apart from competing at the Paris Olympics in 2024 and other international competitions, Alex desperately wants to raise the profile of equestrian sports in China. And in particular, he wants more children to be exposed to horses. For me, the promotion of equestrian sport in China is something that not only do I have a sense of responsibility for, but I'm very, very passionate about. I feel for the sport, China is very important. China has a huge history and connection with the horse that we've lost, that we have an opportunity to regain. But also for modern Chinese society, for myself, growing up with horses as a child, I, I understand what it's given me in terms of character education, in terms of opportunities. And I want as many children in China to have the same opportunity. It will take time. 
you know, accessibility to horses and riding in China is still quite small, but it is growing very quickly and I think that's what the exciting thing is. With this in mind, Alex and his friends set up the horsemanship movement in 2017. Its mission is to introduce communities throughout China to the core values of equestrianism through a program for children from all backgrounds. We have the horsemanship program, which gives children from all backgrounds an opportunity to meet horses and to understand what the values of equestrian sport and equestrianism, the culture behind equestrian sport, is all about and in my opinion for children who perhaps haven't had the opportunity to connect to nature and to animals but especially to bigger animals animals where you have to place your trust in them for your safety i think it's a really powerful opportunity to learn these really important values that let's be honest parents and teachers if you mention the word respect children might switch off immediately but Spending minutes, hours with ponies and horses, it's something that you learn without having to be told what it means. Tilly Barrett says Alex is helping to change the image of the equestrian industry and is a role model for younger generations. A lot of the focus with Alex's career has been on what he's done to create sustainable foundations at the top levels of the sport for other riders. But I think it's it's fair to argue that Alex's involvement in the sport has also inspired a lot of young people who think, actually, there's someone who looks like me and maybe I am welcome in this world. And it makes them feel that that's a place where they belong. So he's made an enormous impact. And I think that's something that's very important to him as well. Alex's parents are tremendously proud of him. Here's his dad, Hua Shan, again. Oh, I'm very proud of Alex and whatever he does. He has achieved, and he has achieved. The, and I wish him, you know, in the future, and he would enjoy himself and uh, just taking time to be happy. As an equestrian, Alex puts in a lot of time and energy into building a relationship with his horses. What does he think we can learn from his experiences in terms of diplomatic relations between China and the UK? So day in, day out, at the stables, I build bridges with my horses. And bridge building is important because without those few individuals and organisations building that underlying critical mass, it's very difficult to build the momentum that's needed for broader understanding, especially in this very complex, hyper-connected world. Nowadays, understanding unity is so important. It's always been important, but it's even more important now. So, Alex says, if we want to enhance relations between China and the UK, it's up to all of us to try to understand each other's cultures and mutual respect is key. To increase understanding between cultures, I think time and patience is, is of course important, but the most important thing is, is responsibility. And I think there tends to be a feeling that it's not your own responsibility to understand, it's for somebody else to explain to you why. Whereas I think in the 21st century, certainly with a large, complex, difficult to understand culture like China, yes. I think as, as Chinese people, we have some responsibility to explain and to discuss. But I think for the world outside of China, with considering how important China will be to everybody, there is a responsibility on everybody to try and understand as well. You've been listening to Bridge Builders. The producers were Elizabeth Mearns and Lao Chen. I'm Louise Greenwood. The sound editor was Terry Wilson.